Hello, my name is Oliver Hecker. I'm the lead developer of Solicitor. And in the next few minutes, I'd like to give you some introduction, some quick start on the usage of Solicitor. So Solicitor comes as an ex executable jar and you can run it if you have some Java 8 environment uh, with uh, the um, that command line here. And when you start it this way, you will get some error message because you need to give some command line options. And you get some help on this. And the first thing we'd like to do is uh, to extract the user guide, which is included as a PDF um, in, uh, in the jar itself. So, so to say, everything you need is contained in that single jar. Um, we'll take a short look into the user guide. Um, you can see it's uh, about a 40 pages or so, and probably, hopefully, everything you need as uh, when working in the project and configuring Solicitor for your project uh, should be included in there. So it's um, something about the architecture, uh, the internal data model, um, how to use it, how to uh, configure importers for importing your project data, uh, about the rules, the build and rules and the language uh, um, of uh, defining the rules and um, the output processing. So we'll take a, a short look into this later on. Um, what I'd like to do next is to create an empty project structure for your project. Um, <coughs> sorry, this could be simply done by, um, uh, by the with option and um, we we'll define some project name or better to say some uh, project folder uh, to put this in and when you run this then solicitor will create a new empty much or less a more or less empty project structure uh, for your new project and um, actually it puts in some sample data uh, very simple um, so you have something you can uh, start with and you can we can see that everything works so the project structure here is the configuration file we take a look into this later on in a few seconds, um, we have uh, some sample input file, which is uh, generated by the, uh, in this case, the Maven license plugin. Um, but it's very simple. It only contains one dependency, one uh, library included in the Maven project, which is uh, a logback library. So this is only really a sample. Um, the uh, important thing here maybe is that it's a dual licensing uh, situation where there are two licenses attached um, to the uh, to that um, library and you can or need to select one of them if you redistribute and this is something solicitor can help you and and deal with that so we'll uh, have a look into this in a few seconds what what happens with this data so let's start Solicitor. Um, we have to give the, um, uh, the position of the, uh, of the configuration file, which is uh, my project, and then solicitor.cfg. As you can see, Solicitor generates uh, some detailed logging when it runs, so you can uh, hopefully see what data it imported from where, which command line options were used, uh, how many rules were processed, and so on. So you can see now it does the rule processing. Um, you can also see uh, there is a built-in rules rule engine uh, being used. There is some built-in SQL database being used for doing the reporting, specifically for transformation and for filtering. And now it has finished uh, to run and generated some output. And the main thing is uh, we will take a look into is some Excel-based uh, output, which is based on a template. You could redefine 
we'll I'll show that in a later session. Um, um, the template now uh, contains some meta metadata on when Solicitor was run, the name of the project, and so on. Um, and then a list with the components included, the artifacts included, or better to say with the licenses being in there. So you have two entries in this case uh, for the uh, lockback library we just saw. Um, and you can see this is what was mainly imported from the uh, from that licenses XML, from that sample data. And then Solicitor does some processing steps on this. It uh, detects uh, the normalized license, so, uh, which is uh, characterized by the SPDX ID, which is some standard on the naming of licenses. Um, so this is uh, then rule-based detected. Um, and then there is some built-in rules how to handle multi-licensing. Um, and in this case, it, uh, these rules decide um, to not to use the EPL, but to, uh, to um, uh, use the LGPL 2.1. So the first one is set to ignore, and the other one is, um, is so to say, taken, is effective. And then there is some um, information on what needs to be done to be compliant with the, um, uh, the conditions of the license. And then there is some dummy, really, and this is, this is really dummy data, uh, some, some legal evaluation, which means, okay, this usage is approved. It's approved because actually, if you don't need that license, it's uh, approved by default. But for the LGPL, in this case, the rules, the built-in sample rules say, okay, that's conditional because LGPL, you need to check really in your project. So this is, even if this is only sample data, it's it's not by intention wrong, but it's of course, um, it's it, it needs to be really seen as sample data. And this is why there is that comment in here. So the, there are different processing steps uh, controlled by rules, and we will have into a look into this in a later session, which fill this, um, this Excel, or better to say, which fill the internal data model process, the internal data, and then there is some reporting generating this Excel. There is some other output generated, and uh, one output is some report um, highlighting all the licenses, and also including all the license texts. And you can see this does not work perfect out of the box um, because it tries to download the licenses over the net. And in this case, the URL which pointed to the license points to some HTML page and you get that HTML verbatim uh, back. And this is now put in here. So you need to do something on this to have this uh, really in a, in a readable format. And that uh, will be also the topic of uh, a later session. So now let's try to adopt this to our uh, project. Let me uh, just first delete this here. And then let's go to some our own project. And as a sample, I took the MyTai Star application, which is the reference application of the Devon framework. Um, and uh, let's try to uh, generate a report um, on the MyTai Star things. So, First thing we need to do is to generate that license XML file for MyTiStar. And we have some description on what we need to do. And we'll take the uh, Maven uh, license, uh, the license Maven plugin, which extracts uh, the, the data and generates that licenses XML file. And we'll put this into the uh, the POM of the server part. We'll only take a look into the server part now. You could also do the, the front end uh, part, um, which is another technology, but also supported by um, Solicitor. Um, but we just um, take the, uh, the Java server part and we'll include the um, configuration of the plugin in here. Just put me, put it in in here. Um, there is some line break due to the uh, uh, PDF formatting, 
Um, we'll leave it as, as it is. As you can see, it's very basic configuration. The license, license Maven plugin could do some transformations and uh, name mappings and so on, but this is all built in in our uh, topic of the, what what Solicitor does. So we don't need it. We really only need some very basic, some very generic configuration. Let me save it here, and then um, take another look into the uh, documentation and see what we need to do to generate the license um, XML. Um, so, go there and uh, execute that Maven goal. And while this is running, we are, um, we'll adopt the uh, project configuration of, of Solicitor, with, which was generated, and uh, have a look into this. So this is, so, uh, is the configuration file for your project within Solicitor. So, and we'll adopt this. So let me say this is my first project and the application which we are will in here, we can have multiple applications. Um, within your project, but we only have the uh, my Thai star Java backend. And uh, then we need to um, put in the, uh, the uh, path to that licenses XML. And let me just prepare this in this way and we'll copy over what uh, Maven generates in the background um, to that uh, directory to use it. So that's all we need to do. Hopefully Maven has uh, created or finished in the background. Yeah, we can see it's a success. And now let's take a look into what was generated by Maven So there is a license XML. You can see it's uh, much larger than the original sample. So there uh, should be quite a lot of things in there. Um, and we copied it over. It's not necessary to copy it over, but um, then you need to, uh, to, to set the path uh, differently in the, in the project. And uh, that, uh, let me just put it in here. So this now should fit together. And we now just execute the same thing again as we did before. Run Solicitor with that configuration. And hopefully it will now generate um, the Excel report for the MyTai Star Java backend. So we'll have to wait a few seconds. Can have a parallel look into the output directory. There should be soon some output in here. You can see there are some exceptions here now, and if you look into them, um, they are caused by uh, the fact that Solicitor tries to download the license texts, which are given by the URLs in the data. And uh, some of the URLs are wrong or outdated specifically. And so the download fails. And these are the exceptions given here. So um, there is some way how to handle this, how to deal with that, to, to get the license text, which is mainly manual then. But there is a workaround or some, some way on how to deal with that and to get um, a nice uh, and complete uh, report, uh, including the licenses, even uh, if they could not be downloaded automatically. So Solicitor has now finished. And now let's take a look into the new reports. As you can see, the report has the engagement name in here somehow. So um, that's uh, by default. And 
Now uh, the report should be much larger. In general, the same thing, but quite larger. You can see we have now the um, project name in here. Um, we have the first application and only application in this case. And we have now quite some longish report on the components included uh, and all the licenses. Uh, you can see it's about 210, which is quite normal for such projects. And yeah, you could now or you need now work on this. What I'd like to mention is that with the uh, included in Solicitor, all the rules are only sample rules. Actually, the rules dealing with the uh, name mapping of licenses, so detecting the licenses, they are not by intention wrong, but um, you cannot, you should not rely uh, perfectly on them. So you need to somehow check this. Specifically, the uh, later uh, steps of processing, so the, um, the legal evaluation, what is built in into Solicitor, that's really, really dummy rules, because that's something which is very specific to, uh, to your, uh, to your um, company rules. And uh, this goes uh, far in, in, in to the direction of legal advice, which is not the scope of a Solicitor. So Solicitor can, so to see, technically execute things, but the rules built in into Solicitor by default, they are just samples on how to work with it. Uh, and uh, you need to create your own rules, um, which reflect your own company's uh, legal policies on the usage of open source software. So don't rely on them. And this is why there are these comments in here. This is based on dummy rules. So, so uh, don't rely on the output of Solicitor, which is produced by the default rules included in Solicitor. So you could now, for instance, um, define some, some filters just to see where are the, the hotspots, let me say, um, see where there are blanks in here. So it seems there are things which could not be mapped where there is no license information included. Uh, interesting is that especially the Mai Tai Star things itself do not have license information attached uh, currently, not in the POM. So this is where a solicitor takes it from, which needs to be fixed somehow. Um, but there are others which could not be uh, detected uh, perfectly or where the detection worked, but there is no um, no uh, mapping for the legal thing. So you need to check on this. Uh, this would be the blanks. Then there are, see if there are any things which for the sample rules um, say, okay, this does not work. And uh, the sample rules define that EPL1 has some issue. Um, so uh, they are not approved. And um, then there are some which are conditional, um, actually, where you, you need to work on and see if this works in your project context. Actually, as I mentioned, all this is only sample rules. And um, you can start from them, maybe. But specifically, the all the uh, legal things, the legal evaluation is something which you need to define on your own company, on your own project. So. Actually, this um, is what I wanted to show to you. Um, there will be some further webcasts on Solicitor dealing with, uh, with um, more specific topics, showing you all the things uh, which uh, you, you need to know when you work with a Solicitor in the project. Thank you for your attention and have fun using Solicitor.